Hello, good evening, and welcome to Wazor TV Insights. My name is Stan Dogwe. Did you know that your lifestyle or daily routine can affect your blood sugar level and blood pressure? It is everyone's most desired wish to live a healthy life. Ill health, as a matter of fact, does not come by chance. Most often, it is as a result of certain unhealthy lifestyle choices we make. We know from research, for example, that ill health as well as the majority of chronic diseases are related to unhealthy life practices like smoking, wrong diet, lack of, lack of exercise, excessive alcohol intake, among others. As emphasized in our previous episodes, it is not as simple as it sounds to change one's lifestyle. But we must change. Lifestyle behaviors such as physical inactivity, unhealthy diets, excessive intake of alcohol and cigarettes can be difficult to break away from. But these lifestyle choices, if not managed well, can result in chronic illnesses such as diabetes and hypertension. Tonight, on the conversation with Stan Dobe, we will focus our conversation on lifestyle changes, diabetes and hypertension in focus, what causes diabetes and hypertension, and how best can we manage it? Wizard TV Insights makes you and every viewer a part of our interesting conversations. Conversations that focus on social economic issues, lifestyle, professional and family values, and national issues that impact on us all. On this program, we situate the issues we bring up for discussion in a national conversation so that every viewer, you and I, can practically identify, share our experiences, our thoughts, and also contribute to the conversation. You are therefore welcome to send in your questions, your views, and your contributions via WhatsApp 055-269-7939 or email us at wazertv at wazergroup.com. If you are on Facebook, search now for Wazer TV and follow us. You can also follow and send me your personal messages on Facebook, Instagram, or on Twitter. My handle for both accounts is at Stan Dobe. We will take some messages, and when we come back, we we'll get into the conversation. To sugar free, freshly squeezed fruit juice, choose Green Line fruit juice and smoothies filled with vitamin C, calcium, iron, fiber, and zinc. Every drop of Green Line juice and smoothies is naturally made to give you energy, good health, and refreshment. Enjoy your favorite Green Line orange, pineapple passion, watermelon, pineapple and turmeric, pineapple beetroot pineapple and ginger, and healthy green. Green line fruit juice and smoothies, powered by nature. Embarrassed. Too embarrassed to speak to a loved one. Too embarrassed to speak to your doctor. Too embarrassed. When in our lifetime, one in four black men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. One in 12 black men will die from prostate cancer. Let me repeat that. One in four black men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. One in 12 black men will die from prostate cancer disease. One in 12. That could be your dad, even your older brother, uncle or grandfather. You need to make sure they are not embarrassed to speak to you or their doctor about it. Hey, Dad, have you had your prostate checked out? See, how hard is that? It's easy. Just start the conversation. Prostate cancer is survivable if caught and treated early enough. Don't let embarrassment stop you having this important conversation. You may save someone's life not just your own. From the Lenclay Sports Stadium to the Santiago Bernabeu, from the Buku Marina 
to the Madison Square Gardens. We would make sure that you do not miss out on all the scoop, the kicks, and all the flicks in the world of sports, from association football, to boxing, to hockey, to tennis. We make sure that we bring the action to you right in your home. And for our Panthers out there as well, we have something very special for you in the Investors Corner. Join me on Wazo TV every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for Ghana's number one sports post-mortem show, The Arena. My name is Kosi Fiaka, and I would be your host. Thank you for staying with us on Wizard TV. My name is Stan Dobie and I bring you Wizard TV Insights every Monday at 8 p.m. You can watch a repeat of this broadcast at 10 a.m. on Wednesday and at 10 a.m. on Saturday. You can also watch a live stream on Facebook or YouTube at Wizard, at Wizard TV. If you must step out away from your TV set, then check out on your Facebook or YouTube now and follow the conversation. On a conversation with Stan tonight, I am joined by two medical doctors for a conversation about diabetes and hypertension, the causes, prevention, and management. But before I go into that, I want to send out some congratulations to um, our team, Yungo FC of uh, Dabala, for qualifying for the middle league of the Zone A. Uh, GFA Division 3 South Tongue uh, football uh, last uh, Sunday um, we, 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 uh, with one match to go the, the young lads have qualified for the middle league and uh, I'm excited as uh, a director of the club and congratulations to coach Ralph and uh, to Willie Namdogwe my brother who is the manager of, of the team and uh, I'll be bringing you some um, you know, real of the, uh, the uh, very exciting goals in, in, in this competition at the tail end of this program. I'm, I'm very excited and I'm happy that we are, we are putting Dabala uh, in South Tongo on the, on, the football, on the football match. But tonight, we, we are joined by Dr. Abraham J. He oversees occupational health and employee wellness at Total House Clinic uh, here in Accra. And um, um, that, that, they, they take care of me and they take care of my family. Uh, so, Dr. Deban, thank you very much uh, for all the uh, health assistance that you've been giving us and for, for sending Doc to, to, to join us here uh, tonight. And um, doc, doc, Dr. Ajay says diabetes and hypertension are silent killers. Get checked and start a new lifestyle. Also with us is Dr. Emmanuel Ofosu Newton. Uh, he is with the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. And he says that diabetes and hypertension are the biggest threats to life, your family needs you. Doc, you are welcome to the show. Thank you. And um, uh, sandwich between two medical doctors, I have to behave, I have to behave myself tonight, so I'm not, I'm not diagnosed on, on, on set, so to speak. But yeah. lifestyle issues are becoming uh, a problem for, for, for many people. Um, there are things that we know and there are things that we don't know. And uh, my viewers are always very active viewers and active participants in the conversation so do want to send your questions and your contributions via whatsapp 055-269-7939 or email us at wizardtv at wizardgroup.com of course if you're my friend on facebook or you're following me on twitter or instagram you are welcome to send a direct message dm me with your questions and i'll pass them on to uh, my two medical uh, doctors who are here with me um, this uh, Evening. So, Doc, I, I, I want to start with you um, with some basic questions. What is diabetes and how can one be tested for it? Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I appreciate this opportunity to also educate the public about this very important um, disease. So, diabetes, I mean, is a metabolic disorder, but in simple terms, what happens is that your blood sugar goes up and um, once that happens there's a lot of instability in the body and the functioning of the system is impaired 
and um, there are a lot of risk factors and that can make you prone to get a diabetes and um, it's preventable okay the issue is that most of the time I asked my colleague here who bear me witness they present late and and you become food on medicine for more or less the rest of your life but it's something that can be pre prevented and um, that is what we are trying to preach the word so that we, we look at the prevention so diabetes is a disease is a chronic disease it's been with us for a very very long time it's one of the oldest chronic diseases as way back as the 1550 bc i think that time they used to call it a sweet urine <laughs> disease because your urine tastes like um, coke or you know very sweet so basically it it causes your blood sugar to go higher than normal and that brings on a lot of problems and when it goes unchecked it causes a lot of distraction in the internal system so, so what, what, what are some of the health problems that are associated with it, associated with diabetes? Yes, so um, diabetes is a metabolic disease um, and it, it, it's not just the sugar disease that everybody thinks. In fact, it's a, it's a syndrome, it's a systemic disease, it affects every part of the body. I usually tell my patients, you are checking the sugar, you see a value, that, that's not diabetes. From your head to your toe, it affects every part of the body because the damage it causes is usually to the very, it causes damage to big blood vessels mm. and also the tiny blood vessels which are in every part of the body. If you press your hand, you see there's blood mm -hmm. and then then you release it. <laughs> so that redness you see, they are all blood vessels mm. and this disease affects every one of them. So coming from the head down to your toe, brain, vital organ. Diabetes causes a lot of damage to the brain. West of is a stroke. Mm -hmm. um, then you get to the chest. Your heart is there. One of the top killers now is heart attack. What we call myocardial infarction. So we see somebody has a heart attack. In developed countries, if you have a heart attack, yes, if you, because they have the resources, they can save you. But here, it's, it's very difficult. So, a heart attack, stroke, you go to the liver, which is down in your abdomen, which is another vital organ. It causes fatty changes in the liver, and that predisposes you to a lot of metabolic problems, as well as even the potential of developing uh, liver cancer and the rest. And the rest. Okay. Then go down to the genitals um, from the abdomen, yes. For men, you don't want to go there because it's a topic that will not finish exhausting. But mention it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so diabetes affects nerves. The micro, uh, the small blood vessels that supply nerves are damaged by this disease. Mm. And these nerves control how blood circulates to your genitalia to have a full erection and to be able to... They can prevent erection. Exactly. Your performance. Exactly. But you know, there are some things that for, for most men, you can tell them about the, the, the effects of all these things on them, but they will not take it serious. Yes. So, but if they know that it will affect exactly. their performance in bed, they will that, begin to think twice. Mm -hmm. So but it will affect your performance <laughs> in bed. So, you know, listen to us very carefully tonight. Yes. <laughs> Uh, some of them are attributed to the medications they are taking, but I it think because we don't screen them before we start the medications, they assume that it's the medications. So that's, that's another very important structure. And then these legs that we have, all your weight is on these legs. You wake up, you're able to move around. In fact, the most distal part of our legs is where the problem usually happens. So these small blood vessels, go into your toes and they are end arteries, call them end arteries because they, they, they are, there are no branches from there to supply when there's a cutoff at a point. So the blood vessels in your leg can also be affected and that is why people with diabetes, when they get an injury to their foot, they tend to have ulcers or sores that never heal because the blood flow there is impaired and um, without enough blood flow, 
healing will not take place. So these are some big the, the, the things. Mm. We, 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 we'll go into some, 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 some more details, okay. but we hear about diabetes, um, Dr. J. Um, diabetes or oh, sugar, mm -hmm. you know, too much. But we know that there are various types, type mm. one and type two. Mm. What are the differences in these types? All right. Yeah, so, yeah, we have basically type 1, type 2. Type 1, we term it as the insulin dependent. What it means is that for that one, you would need insulin. Let me just go back a bit into the definition, definition. of diabetes. So diabetes, what really happens is that um, there is either the low production of insulin, okay, or your cells become sort of resistant to insulin so that the sugar movement from the bloodstream into the cells is impaired. So when you look at a type 1, which is insulin dependent, those people, they form about 5% or 10% of the diabetes. And um, they have a problem with the production of insulin. So they don't have enough insulin to help with the sugar crossing from the bloodstream into the cells. And they become dependent on exogenous um, insulin, th those are the ones that you see them injecting almost every day. Okay. Now the type 2 and the type 1, we call it the um, early onset because normally it will happen in childhood, adolescence because the problem is right from the insulin production. Now the most important or the most prevalent is the type 2, which is the adult onset. And that is where most of the problems are because basically the main cause is the lifestyle. Okay, um, you get employed, and I'm using it because of you know, I'm an occupational yeah. person, I do a lot of employee medicals and stuff, and I always keep an eye on my employees how they join the company, how they exit the company. And most of the time, you realize that they start very fit now, they start a sedentary lifestyle, go wakes up in the morning, drives to work, sit by the desk, take some tea some bread and egg, sits, some in-between snacks, have a heavy lunch, drives back home, and the routine goes on. So there's inactivity, sedentary, the blood level, the sugar level keeps rising, and it goes on for a long time. And that is where the insensitivity comes in with the insulin. So that's the type two. People get obese. So mostly the type 2 is, very, is what we really, really need people to really, really be careful about. We need to exercise. <laughs> okay. But, but that, that when one is diagnosed with uh, type 2 mm -hmm. uh, diabetes, that, does it mean that you would also have to go on insulin? Okay. It is not necessarily the case on diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I diagnose you with type 2 diabetes, mostly we'll start you on, first of all, there is a window, okay? There is a place where we call impaired fasting blood sugar. Okay. I use, I normally make things simple. We can use the traffic light. Mm -hmm. That is the amber, okay? Yeah. So at that stage, we can put in lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. We can look at your diet. If there's stress, we can bring it down. And it can correct. When you cross the yellow light and it comes red, that is where the diagnosis is made. Yeah. At that point, then I'm sorry, we need to put you on some medication. Okay. So most of the time on the type 2, we'll put you on oral medications, depending on how severe yours is and how early we diagnosed you. When it gets very bad, okay, when the sugar control is not, is not achieved with the oral medication, then we may have to go on with the insulin. But it is not done lightly. I mean, you need to really have uh, monitoring in place. That is why most of the chronic cases with the diabetes and hypertension, you realize that we always have an appointment for you. At least every month or so. It's not for some patients think that we're just wasting their time, but there's a reason. When you come, we'll talk. We'll look at how your medications are. We'll check your sugar. we we'll look at how it is. Sometimes it's non-compliance from the patient. If you're non-compliant and you don't take your own medication, it means that your sugar is always going to go up, skyrocket. And at the point, the orals will not work. And then we are forced to give you the uncomfortable injections. <laughs> and then, yeah, but, but, so. but can, can 
can one get rid of the the, the type two uh, diabetes, for instance, if you stop eating carbohydrates? I mean, yeah, one thing <laughs> like, or, or you lose weight. Okay, so unfortunately, if the diagnosis is made, as I said earlier, if we are the amber, the yellow light, there is something we can do about without giving you medication. But once we get to the full blown diabetes, I'm sorry, there has to be some medication. Okay, you stopping carbohydrates is not going to change anything. Okay, or you stopping or you exercising is not. It's going to help, but it's not going to reverse. You should have done that earlier. Earlier, exactly. You are watching Wizard <laughs> TV Insights. It's a conversation with Stan Dobe, and tonight we are bringing you information about diabetes and hypertension, the causes, how to prevent it or manage it, and um, so. Doc, I, I wanted to go into, into um, treatment, but my mother died um, as a result of diabetes. And sometimes we hear that oh, there is some genetics to it. Um, should I be worried? Yes, actually. Really? Yes. <laughs> you, you should. This is scary. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, we talked about risk factors. Mm. Of course, um, you can try and prevent diabetes, but as some aspects of our lives we have no control of, of. Genetics is one of them. You can control what you eat, but where you came from, you didn't have any choice. Mm. So um, the type one, which is um, sort of an autoimmune disease that your body fights the pancreas, which is the organ that produces the insulin that is needed for the sugar or carbohydrate metabolism. Um, when studies were conducted, I mean, we expect that that one will be more genetically inclined, but it's not. It's rather the type 2, which is related to environmental um, factors, mostly lifestyle and all that. That is, has a high, higher link to um the uh, the diabetes so if your mother were first degree relative why usually the mothers if you were a son and your mother had diabetes then you should be on the lookout okay so you should be more aggressive everybody should be aggressive you're but supposed to be here as a friend but <laughs> you're, you're not uh, no. you're not helping the so, situation so knowledge is power <laughs> Once you know you are at a higher risk, yes. then you know how important it is mm. to, and especially when you have witnessed how devastating the disease can be, then you, you take more caution. Caution. Yes, so you should be worried. The, 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 what, what can be done or what must we do to prevent diabetes? This is a, an interesting question because I think um, we've, we've been hinting on lifestyle. Mm. Yes. So like I said, there are the, there's aspects you can control, okay, and there's the other one you can't. If you have it because of a genetic link, that one you can't do anything about. But the environmental factors that we talked about, um, or that we are going to go into, it's one, sedentary lifestyle. Take a craft, for instance. People wake up as early as 4 a.m. just so they can avoid traffic. So what, what is that time that they are going for their morning run? It's not there. They get to the office and it's work, 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 eat. They close, they sit in traffic, get back home. They get home late. Some people don't even go because of the traffic. They stay and even go later. So if your company does not have a gym that you can quickly go in and then have some activity done, it means that practically the whole day until you go to bed, you have been sedentary. And that allows the, the, the banku that you ate, which is supposed to be given to somebody who is actively doing a, a manual work. You are sitting behind a desk and you ate a banku. All that excess carbohydrate <laughs> will be converted to fat. To fat okay. And that does not allow the pancreas to uh, perform its role very well. It has a way it functions. So you expose the pancreas to excess sugars, excess sugars, excess sugars. It produces the insulin until a point where it gives up, just like any machine. When you overuse it without taking care of it, you, you, it goes down. Good. So sedentary lifestyle, we have to 
uh, find a way around it, even in this Accra. Now, when you even go to the villages, there are a lot of people who are getting diabetes. We, initially, we thought it was a disease of rich people and all that, but now it's not the case. Why? The knowledge about nutrition is changing. Um, the local foods and things that we thought were healthy now are being mixed with all sorts of things. So you eat them and then you are not even getting the correct oils that you are supposed to take. So you go to the villages and they still have diabetes. The other thing is weight loss. Okay. Type 2 diabetes actually makes you lose weight. Type 1, um, yes, but with type 2, one of the features is weight loss. But if you are overweight, if you are obese, then your risk is higher. Okay. So you'd have to try and cut down on the weight. Um, the other thing that really is very worrying when it comes to diabetes is smoking and alcohol. Like I said, it's a syndrome. Yes, you have problem with sugar metabolism. You have a problem with fats as well. So if you are taking in something extra, that also worsens that problem. Smoking alcohol affects the blood vessels in numerous ways. So if you add them to diabetes, then it worsens it. So in, as much as possible, you either stop the alcohol or cut it down totally. Or, or cut it totally. And then smoking, stop it entirely. I thought it was Dr. J. Any other yeah, um, ways yeah. in which you think? Yeah, I think, yeah. Let me, I may hope, hopefully I may be friendly to you and allay your fears a bit. Yes, as, as my colleague was saying, I mean, um, I normally, when I talk to people about di diabetes, most chronic disease, mostly, I, I break the risk factors into two, the modifiable and non-modifiable, okay? So when we say non-modifiable, it means that there isn't much you can do about it. And the modifier is the one that we have control over. So as you said, if there's a family history, there's a genetics, it is there. But it is not a death sentence or a surety that because mommy had it or because daddy had it, I'm going to have it. No. What it tells you is that, okay, so this is in the family. So I got to be careful, okay? I need to make sure I don't go on this tangent of sedentary lifestyle, which would then increase my chance, my chance of getting diabetes. So even though the, the non-modifiable factor is there, you can control the modifiable, okay? So you having it in a family, it is not, don't, don't, don't be too scared. You need to just make sure you keep an eye on it and then you do the right things, okay? So um, I hope it is friendly to you. Yeah, a bit. It's, it's, it's <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and then, of, of course, I mean, um, with, with diabetes, um, as my colleague was saying, um, it has a lot of socioeconomic, I mean, toll on us. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we need to try as much as possible to, I mean, control. If possible, get rid of. Because, you see, the World Health Organization, I think they are projecting, if I'm, if I'm right, uh, as, as, as of 2000, I think it was about 2.8% of the world population were diabetic. Yeah. And the projection was that by 2030, it's going to double. And guess what? The prevalence was going to be in Asia and Africa. Okay? Yeah. So uh, I think our way of life, we sort of now, unfortunately, uh, sort of link affluence to eating all the wrong stuff. Okay? I, I, I talked to a group of people, I told them, you know what? As you get richer, you should eat like a poor man. Poor man. Okay. And the poor man should be eating like a rich man. Because, I mean, when you driving your car in air condition, no activity, you are doing all the pizza and all that, it's not good. Okay. So we need to, the lifestyle is very, very important. Once we work on the lifestyle and then we change, I mean, the modifiable factors, we lose weight, we exercise, we eat the right amount of food. Okay, we don't get up and eat carbohydrate, 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 carbohydrate all day. And, 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 and the part I get from, I hosted some nutritionists yeah. uh, over a two part series, and from what you know, uh, you both have said, it, it's, not, it's not what you eat necessarily, but how you eat and what you use. Exa it for. Yeah, ex so exactly. For somebody who is um, uh, working on the construction site and whatever, eating a ball of cake yeah. in the yeah. morning, yeah. you know. 
it, it may not be bad for him. Yeah. But you who ate that yeah. king exactly. and just come to yeah. sit, maybe yeah. you know, as I'm sitting mm -hmm. here and I'm here mm -hmm. for five mm -hmm. hours mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. doing anything, yeah. And yeah. there's king king. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I'm hungry again. Then exactly. I sent for rice. Exactly. And I eat rice. Yeah. So yeah. It, 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 we, we need to get our nutrition right. Yeah. We need to get our dieting very, yeah. very, very, very right. Well, I normally don't even restrict people if you are healthy. Yes. Okay. For, let me hear an example. Look at the footballers. Okay. Look at when they were actively playing soccer. Okay. I can bet you that they eat all kinds of food. But because of the activity, their weights are managed. When, once they retire, you see them putting on the extra weight. Okay? Okay. So it tells you that now they are not burning that yeah, away. That, that, that fat and that is where the problem is. So you can have your fruits, you can, but make sure the exercise. You no, know, I always say it wherever I go, and I'll say it again to everybody. The best medicine any doctor can ever give you. Is exercise <laughs> okay? I'm not doing, I mean, you know, thanks. Dr. Deba has his own way of uh, oh, when he calls me once in a while. How are you doing? Stan, are you okay? Is, what are you passing by to, to check? And, you know, I, I don't like going to the hospital yeah, that, that yeah, much, so yeah. I'm always, you know, hiding. But I always assure him that oh, as for my everyday work, even if I miss it for, for a day, the next okay. day I make sure yeah, that I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I go. Um, I say I, I can't jog. I don't want to jog. I want to run. But at least an hour, an hour and a half every day of work, yeah. well, either in the morning no, or in that, the that, evening. That, 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 that's you know, should, yeah. should, should, yeah. should, should yeah. If, you, if you can have that habit of at least, even if you can do a 30 minutes every day of brisk walking, that's fine. And and in this part of the world, our problem is that we wait to be diagnosed, diagnosed before you see them hitting the road. <laughs> Sometimes a bit, you know. <laughs> let, 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 let me tell you a funny story. I. I you know, for some reason, for work and others, so I realized I'd put on quite, mm -hmm. quite a bit. So I decided to work on my weights. So I was working, walking, and doing other things. And so I, I reduced quite mm -hmm. uh, weight. And uh, some friends were worried. So they started calling others and asking them, ah, Are you sure Stan is okay? <laughs> it appears he's sick. You know, uh, are you sure he's not diabetic? Uh, something, something. So, so what, what, but when I heard it, I just laughed. I said, Well, I mean, this is what I want to do. I want to do it all the time. But viewers consistency pays i mean for those who know me a couple of years back you know that this is not how i was but i walk every day and one of the good things of covid was that the streets were even freer at that time so every every morning every evening i was on the road and all that and because i know the other things that i can't stop for instance i can't do away with my work plan i mean i mean always so I must make sure that I'm able to burn it. So sometimes I say, okay, Charlie, maybe in the afternoon I do it and then find something else to do, walk to some site and do so. I mean, once you're able to do uh, a couple of these things, we should be, uh, be able to check our lifestyle. This is Wazor TV Insights on Wazor TV. My name is Stan uh, Dobe. And uh, tonight we are looking at diabetes and hypertension. I hope we were able to find some time to talk about hypertension uh, before the end of the show. The causes, prevention, and management. Uh, with us tonight is Dr. Abraham Oponi J. He is with the Total House Clinic. And Dr. Emmanuel Fusu Newton, who is from the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Um, I, I, I have some... some statistics about on diabetes that i would want to share with you um, in the in the next few uh, uh, minutes but i want i wanted to ask this this question first uh, uh, dr fosu newton that what should be a normal blood sugar what should be your normal blood sugar okay thank you um for blood sugar um, we look at there are different um measurements that we use okay we have what we call the fasting blood sugar and then we have what we call the random blood sugar then there's a third one called the glycated hemoglobin so for a fasting blood sugar we expect it to be less than six less than six yes so oh, okay um what's it means is that you would have had at least eight hours of an, a fast, mm -hmm. preferably an overnight fast. fast. Then, then in the morning, it is tested. Not after you have gone for your run, you come and check. No. Before. When you wake up in the morning, if you are going to check it in the hospital, make sure you sit in a comfortable car, get there. When you get there, you are not 
run in to see the doctor, you walk in, sit down, right. have it checked. So that no excess energy is used because that will affect the sugar value. Okay. So you check that and you expect it to be less than 6. Now if it is between 6.1 and 7, then we have what you call the impaired fasting glucose or fasting sugar, which is sometimes called prediabetes. It means that you are on your way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, anything seven and above is diabetes. However, we want to repeat the tests, not just the single reading, like I said. Now, with the random blood sugar, the, the values are a bit different. So the random blood sugar, um, somebody walks in, you want to check their sugar. You don't know when they eat. Mm. Of course, when you eat, immediately after eating, your blood sugar will go up. So um, the values are a bit higher. Uh, so anything between uh, 7.8 to 11.1, it's measured in millimoles per liter in our environment. Other places measure it in different units. But here is millimoles per liter. So if you buy the glucometer, make sure it's calibrated to millimoles per liter. So anything between 7.8 and 11.1 is impaired random blood glucose. That's also prediabetes. Then anything above, anything from 11.1 and above is a diabetic range. Okay. Then you have what we call the glycated hemoglobin. These other tests that I mentioned are um, on the spot tests. Test, yeah. You just do them. And so if I am diabetic and I come in, having eaten since morning, I check my sugar, random sugar, and it is seven, you see that I don't have diabetes. Uh, but then we have another test that measures the, how your blood has handled the glucose, which is the carbohydrate, over a period of about three months. Because um, these glucose are red blood cells, Mojano. That is where um, it gets its energy from. And they are attached to molecules, so and their lifespan is about uh, about 120 days, which is about three months. So you expect every three months there will be a cycle. So we measure how much of your glucose has been in the body for that three months period. So we look at a value of about 5.6. If you are above it, between 5.6, 6.5, we see that you are pre-diabetic. But of course, you don't want to get above 5.6. Anything above 7 is over diabetes. Once your um, HbA1c or the glycated hemoglobin is 7 and above, or 6.5 and above, you have diabetes. Uh -huh. There is one other test that I didn't mention, which is the oral glucose tolerance test. Usually, it's used in the pregnant women. Pregnant women also have a risk factor for getting diabetes. We call it gestational diabetes. So um, you are given a glucose load. So the glucose load that is given to you, we will check your sugar uh, certain times after taking the glucose load to see whether your body is able to actually handle the glucose or not. Uh, because so if your body is able to handle the glucose, then we say you are not. But if it is not, and then the values are within the ranges, reference ranges, then you say you are diabetic. So these are the tests that we can do for diagnosing diabetes. Okay. So, so Dr. G, I wanted to ask that, I mean, what, what, what should trigger me to want to walk into a hospital and, and, and talk mm. to the doctors and say, I, I want to check what my you know, uh, sugar mm. level is or whether I have diabetes. Are there any symptoms yeah. that I need to, I need to quickly uh, okay. jolt myself and walk to the hospital? Okay, yeah. Thank you. Um, before I answer that question, uh, I think I, I want us to all have the habit of at least once a year, mm. have your GP pay a visit. Okay, let him check a few things. Most of us don't go to the hospital at all. We wait till the disease is far advanced before we before go. We go. Okay. Yeah. So let's all have a habit of at least doing our physicals once a year. Once that is done, we'll pick up these symptoms early and then we'll manage it. Now going straight to your question, I mean, um, as my colleague said in the beginning, um, one of the symptoms of diabetes that you lose weight, type 2. 
okay um so you see a man who's about 95 kilos or 100 kilos and over a short period of time he's come to like 80 and you can see that there's an obvious <laughs> drastic change he starts complaining that in the night he wakes, he wakes up about four times to urinate and he tells you that dog the pee is a lot large volumes dog nowadays i eat a lot i don't get satisfied it's another problem he drinks a lot a lot of water because if you are peeing a lot you're getting dehydrated you need to so urinating a lot in the night losing weight thirst, eating a lot these are all signs that your sugar may be going up so once you have these signs you need to quickly see the doctor and don't take it lightly most people just brush it off <laughs> and they do all sorts of things and then it, it continues some even i've had patients who come to live with it that oh i said doctor i said yeah someone's even told me that oh yes see oh so the person was fine that oh i'm urinating a lot that's a good sign and then he Why stays on <laughs> and then he stays on and the sugar remains high for a long time so the time that they, they are finally diagnosed of diabetes the sugar control becomes tough so these are the main things that you see the weight loss eating a lot urinating a lot in the night high volumes of when the volumes are huge okay so 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 for viewers we, we, we're giving you some pictorial yeah. you know illustrations of what uh, dr opponent jay is talking about uh, you're always hungry you're always tired dizziness yeah. yeah. so, you can, you can, you can yeah. so and then i mean tiredness a lot of urination um sometimes you feel you could have some dizzy spells okay and um the little thing that you do you are tired you can't even go for a walk slightest thing you are getting tired these are all signs that you you may be getting diabetes and then you need to report as soon as possible once you report early and i'll go back to what i said earlier please it should be part of us we shouldn't wait for the disease to drive us to the hospital let's come to the hospital to prevent the disease yeah. it's very very important to prevent to prevent prevention it's easier is to key. prevent than manage thank you <laughs> prevention they say is always better than cure. cure so i'll plead with everybody at least i i was telling a group of i mean clients that if not for anything you after christmas just come come and see dr official pa okay then, let me check your bp let me check your sugar i mean then, it's all helps okay so wizard tv insight here on wizard tv we are discussing lifestyle changes diabetes and hypertension causes prevention and uh, management i wanted to share some um, bits of information about the uh, diabetes prevent prevalence rate of diabetes in ghana according to the um, information that we got from uh, world bank information says so the prevalence of diabetes in ghana uh, as of 2021 uh, is reported uh, at 2.6 percent and uh, about 10 percent of all people with diabetes have type 1 diabetes here in ghana 90 percent of those who have diabetes of all diabetes cases in ghana is type 2 and um, as you've heard already uh, from dr newton and dr point type 2 uh, diabetes is the most common type of all uh, di diabetes and um, the complications of diabetes relatives are you know um, eye damage you know uh, permanent kidney damage uh, diabetic foods cardiovascular diseases coronary heart disease peripheral neuropathy and i mean you heard all that that dr newton uh, went uh, a lot on about now an estimated nine out of ten adults currently uh, diagnosed with diabetes have type 2 uh, di di diabetes and um, by the by the numbers uh, we are looking at um, number one um, type 1 diabetes is the uh, most common chronic disease uh, in children and 95% uh, of diabetes patients uh, are type 2 and then 7 million uh, that's the number of people with undiagnosed um, diabetes and uh, 30 million are the number of others who live with uh, di diabetes so i mean th these are these are the risk factors i've also you know been been told you and uh, what you are basically telling you 
is that you need to change, you know, our lifestyles. We need to change our lifestyles, eating uh, habits, sedentary lifestyles. Find and you know, in all the conversations over the weeks, what comes up always is that find some time to walk, find some time to do some physical activity, go and play some football, you know, play some ampe, you know, just do something. I mean, if we can't do it every day. Every other day or thrice a week should be helpful. And um, I see that your, mages, your messages are coming in fast. We'll take a short break, but I wanted to hear from Dr. AJ on something. And then we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll take your messages. Yeah, just before we go, I just mm. uh, want something. I have to add this. I mean, as my colleague said, you know, there's a one we call a type 3, the pregnancy induced or gestational induced, yes. diabetes. Yes. And we need to be careful. If any woman has ever had that, normally it's a sign that you may get diabetes mm. so after delivery and all that you need to keep an eye on it okay sometimes i've had clients who come to me and in the history you realize that there was that problem but it wasn't picked up mm. or the clinic did not follow up on it so please if you've had that problem please make sure you follow up on it okay we'll take a short break when we come back your questions your comments and your contributions Why live in darkness when the light of God's word has solutions? When you are working with God, you must learn to trust God. Sometimes the things that look inconvenient, it is working for your good. Losses will come, victories will come. But all mixed together is pushing you to where your silver, your gold, your destiny, your anointing is waiting for you. Tune in to Air Power with Kaka Baden, providing strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Watch Air Power with Kaka Baden on Windsor TV every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. and on Saturdays at 7.30 a.m. Get ready for a transformation. Air Power, teaching the nations with signs and wonders. Your flight is ready to leave. Sit back and relax and enjoy the flight. From the Lenclay Sports Stadium to the Santiago Bernabeu, from the Boko Marina to the Madison Square Gardens, we would make sure that you do not miss out on all the scoop, the kicks, and all the flicks in the world of sports, from association football to boxing to hockey to tennis. We make sure that we bring the action to you right in your home. And for our punters out there as well, we have something very special for you in the Investors Corner. Join me on Wazer TV every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for Ghana's number one sports post-mortem show, The Arena. My name is Kosi Fiaka, and I would be your host.
you are welcome back uh, to Wazo TV Insights. This is a conversation with me, Stan Dobri, and today we are treating. We are supposed to be treating diabetes and hypertension, but it's obvious that uh, we will spend the uh, 90 minutes talking about diabetes, and um, we'll continue the conversation with hypertension next week. So we'll take your questions. Uh, the WhatsApp number is 055-269-7939, and uh, you can also email us at Wazo TV at Wazo Group dot com or send a direct message to me uh, via my Facebook or Twitter uh, handles now so the 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 first question um, here is uh, please is it mandatory for every organization or institution to employ an occupational health and safety officer and also set up a department <laughs> okay um, I, I it, it is not mandatory mm, so to speak it depends on the kind of employment it is, mm. the hazards and uh, the environment. I think um, there is a law, I mean, depending on, for instance, if you are in the mining industry, definitely before you can set up and start operations and all that, you need to meet certain levels. And obviously, occupational health is key and safety. But if, let's say, you are working in the banking sector, in a bank where the hazards may be low, it might not really be a requirement. So it depends on the industry. Okay, certain industries may require that you have that before, before you can. But ideally, every occupation should have a certain level of occupational health and safety because there are hazards all over. And, and today, even, <laughs> even if the, the company cannot set up a department, I mean, there are private medical exactly. you know, uh, companies and facilities that you can contact that will uh, give provide you that service, you know, services yeah. for you. Yeah. So, Dr. Newton, uh, please, how much alcohol is too much? <laughs> okay, so by WHO standards, the World Health Organization standards, um, for an adult, of course, alcohol is consumed by adults. If you're a child, don't indulge. But um, for adults, you are expected not to, for the adult male, you're expected not to go above what you call 21 units of alcohol is that, is, that, a week. Is, is that the thought of a 45% so, alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> or, so, so, or the 14%? So the spirits. <laughs> so we look at it in terms of the spirits. So a thought mm. is considered a unit. So doctor, I, I don't take alcohol much. When I go home from work, I take three thoughts and then I eat my mm. fufu. Okay, so mm. that is three. Mm. So seven days a week, that is 21 units for a man. And then for a woman, 14 units. So you're not supposed to go beyond 21? Yes. Ah, but so, 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 <laughs> no, wait, wait. so if, if, now? if boys, boys <laughs> drop a bottle of um, Remy XO on the table, there's also... <laughs> Please go. So that, that is how... We quantify it. Mm. When it comes to the beers and then the uh, other drinks. The, the stouts. Yeah, yeah. The, the, those ones. Um, it's difficult to quantify, but uh, let's take um, let's say a, a big bottle of beer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if I, do, if I do I do five bottles of <laughs> mini beer at a sitting, and that's every day for 30 days, <laughs> and we need a 21. <laughs> yes, we need a 21. Okay. But... Um, the other thing you see that that is what they have set mm. as an average okay all the everybody has a different body mm. and how your body Reacts handles it some things, yeah. somebody was drinking thought his liver was not going to be possible for a transplant that his sister needed not knowing he had an extra liver somewhere so you go where you are sitting with the boys you are drinking somebody is never getting drunk maybe he has an extra liver you don't mm. or you have maybe hepatitis B, your liver is already damaged. You take just three shots and then that is a problem for you. But that is the average for a man. And then for a woman, say 14 units. Uh, there was some time, I think it was revised, that whether man or woman is the same. Is the same. Okay, so you shouldn't go above 14 units. So I think... Um, you don't, you don't. <laughs> uh, 
let, let me rather let me rather follow up with you on this one. That so you can, you can blend the two. That I want to know if uh, this is Bambila King. Yeah, he says, Stan, I want to know if diabetes is transferable. In other words, can a diabetic husband transfer it to the wife by means of sex? Oh, is 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 a no. Thank um, you. it's not sexually transmitted. Mm. So, the fact that your husband or your wife has it doesn't mean that through intercourse you can get it. No. So that is a no, yeah. Uh, you want me to touch on the yes, alcohol? Yes, please do, please Okay, so... I, 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 I'll, <laughs> uh, I'll let you do that for um, a minute. Whenever I'm asked this, it's a very, it's a, it's a trick question mm. sometimes, but um, I have a, a, a stricter view mm. compared to what Dr. my colleague just told you. Um, you don't need it. You don't need alcohol. Alcohol is bad, mm. okay? And... Um, Let's be honest, it's difficult to be strict about all those units and stuff. Okay, you can't. And one dangerous thing when that. Why you need to do it? It's not possible. It's like a city. And you see, <laughs> I mean, I don't drink, but I know people who drink, and it is addictive. It is nice. It is sociable. You get carried away. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it's difficult. So I always will tell you that as much as possible, you stay out of it. Because if it becomes an addiction, it's a terrible thing for you to handle. And one other <laughs> deadly thing is those who binge drink. They will tell the okay, doctor says I shouldn't drink, so Monday to Friday he will not drink. <laughs> then Friday night, boys boys will sit and, Saturday night. and consume like a whole crate. No. That is deadly. The whole crate is uh, <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I mean, you're you talking the crate as so, I mean, four people would, would consume the crate in two days. I mean, that one is for just two people. Really? Say, you know. uh, so I mean, I, I mean, let's. I'm just. Yeah. Alcohol is bad, okay? Because it is difficult to control it. Let's be but honest. But you know, all those who drink alcohol know it is bad. I know. <laughs> It's but just, it's but the bad things are sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why, so. why is it that people in the village don't get diabetes? Okay, yeah. So, um, I think the, the explanation to it is pretty simple. I mean, when you look at the village, or even the olden days, our fourth grandfathers and, I mean, great-great-grandparents, um, they, they, they were free from most of these problems because there were no Ubers, there were no boats, they walk. They go to the farm in the morning. They weed, clear their whatever, get their fresh food, mm. plantain, cassava, whatever. They even prepare the food right the at the farm. They don't go and buy any refined stuff. They use the palm oil, those good right azali. And they are very nutritious. They don't contain a lot of these cholesterols that will give you all the problems and they are also very active they walk miles so whatever they consume they are actively disposing or burning them away so it's one of the reasons why they are free from these chronic diseases mm -hmm. and some people term these as disease of the rich okay because we tend to be the, you know sedentary and all that yeah. yeah so that's what the, the explanation about please, that please when someone with type 2 di diabetes is losing weight what medicine would help the person not an agent is there any medicine <laughs> <laughs> so uh, well once the diabetes is put under control mm. then the factory builds itself up okay so the medicine to actually help you gain weight is actually to control the diabetes. Once your body is able to handle the carbohydrates very well, mm. your, your weight will come back. Okay. Dr. J, you, 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 you try to use the traffic light amber and mm. all that as an example, and uh, Odo from Kwadaso in Kumasi says, please tell doctor to tell us about blood glucose levels, the values okay. corresponding to the traffic light as you yeah. said. Yeah, so as my colleague explained earlier, I mean, you are looking like a fasting blood sugar of between three to about six okay to be the norm mm. okay once you go above six so from three to six we'll say you're in the green light zone mm. okay once you cross six to seven that is where there is the impaired fast that's the amber that is where possibly we can do lifestyle modification without giving you medicine and then once you cross the seven the 7.1 upwards then you are going to full-blown diabetes with a red light, yeah, so to speak. So um, Joseph from Ada uh, wants to know, Dr. Newton, that I'm suffering from muscle pool almost every day, and it also gets 
tiring after any hard work or exercise. I need a medication, and uh, it was a doctor's contact. So my producers would send you the contacts of the doctors, so you can talk to them after. But I mean, is there, is there any advice you can give him, Joseph? Yes. So um, we said one of the symptoms is, of, of course, um, when you are easily getting tired. tired yes. yes. And of course, if the energy that the muscles need are not going, and that's where you need the insulin the most to mm. drive the energy into the muscle. So the least thing, it gets cramped because now it's not getting the glucose. It has to rely on other alternative source of metabolism and he gets that. Okay. However, he should go to the hospital and make sure that he has it checked. Uh -huh. It could be the, something else. Yes. Yes. Uh, Mark from Asinfosu says, Doc, can too much sweet and drinking of refined drinks uh, lead to diabetes? Um, yes. Okay. I mean, if, if you keep on consuming these drinks. People who are addicted to like Coke, um, this sugary stuff, and also are not active. Mm. These refined stuff, they easily get into the bloodstream. You know, the carbohydrates and all that are broken down to glucose, yeah. okay? And the sh Coke and those sweetened stuff, they are, they are not the cups. They've already broken down to a certain level. So they easily get into the bloodstream. So if, if, if he, most, most clients, who, diabetic clients, we actually even tell them, because one of the complications of diabetes is that your sugar can go very low, okay? So we even advise them that you should always have a bar of chocolate, bottle of Coke or Fanta by you. So you have the symptoms of the low sugar, which is very could be fatal, you try to take it because it will quickly bring your sugar up. So if you are taking these things, it means that your blood sugars will quickly be going up. And if it goes on for a long time, it can actually give you diabetes. Ivan says uh, he's watching from Kwame Danso in the Bono East region and says, I'm really enjoying your show. You guys are really educating us. Keep it up. And uh, Rudolph uh, says, great program. Uh, please, what is the link between carbonated drinks and diabetes? That's what Dr. Ajay just explained. Um, Freeman from Kweu says, ask uh, the medical doctor for me, what is uh, diabetes insipidus? Uh, and um, how can it be prevented? Okay, um, should I? Help? Okay, all right. So, di diabetes is, 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 is a different um, disorder compared to um, diabetes mellitus. Mm. Okay, that one is to do with diuresis in terms of um, volume control. Your urine production is a lot, it's not really because the sugar is high, mm. it's, it's to do with a certain hormone which is supposed to regulate fluid, and th that, is, that is what it is. It so, is that is def different from. The sugar, the sugar we are talking about. Uh, Samo, we are free from uh, Adresso in Kofori. Good evening, Stan, and hello to your panel. I must say we are enjoying the discussion. I'm interested in getting an explanation on the myth of having to eat plantain all through when one has diabetes. Is plantain not a carbohydrate, or one should say it has a low uh, glycemic index? But then what happens when the same plantain is ripe? Will it not contain same glucose content when not, uh, right? <laughs> Dr. Newton. Yes. I think growing up, I also had that. Yes. My, my great grandmother used to only eat plantain fufu. Yes. fufu. No, no. Yes. Well, I think it's a myth, actually, because it, it's still carbohydrates. But the issue is not really whether it's carbohydrates or not. Okay, because you need carbohydrates your body depends on carbohydrates as its main source of energy. So you need carbohydrates. But as we said earlier, how the body uses the carbohydrates, how you make your body use the carbohydrates is what's most important. So um, there are complex carbohydrates, like uh, Dr. Jay said. Um, when you take the carbonated drinks, they are refined. Already. So they easily just get into the bloodstream because there's a lot of problems. But when you take the um, see corn is a whole grain. The carbohydrate in it is complex, so it takes time to be broken down, and then the body uses it. So yes, it's also carbohydrate, but it's not as, not as yeah. toxic as. The, so plantain, yes, of course, compared to the cassava, the starch that you can <laughs> see, of course, it has a, a lower glycemic index uh -huh. compared to, let's say, rice, refined uh, rice. 
But if you have whole grain brown rice, or something, that one is more, is a complex starch and it can be broken down. So it's a myth. The, 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 the plantain does not uh, by itself. By itself, yes. Okay. Bright is from Pong, uh, says this is very insightful. I love today's discussions. Is it advisable for a diabetic patient to take bread or anything made with flour? <laughs> okay, so um, I think um, you can't take it. I mean, when we refer our clients to the nutritionist or the dietitian, they normally will handle this. Uh, it's just it's about the proportion okay um, so if you are diabetic you need to see your 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 dietitian see management of diabetes i should say that it is a multidisciplinary thing, thing. Yeah. it's not just a physician no we work together so you need to see your dietitian i will not say that it is bad to take it but it's just about the quantity and the, the proportion and the, yeah. and the proportion um my mom was first diagnosed of hypertension. Along the line, there came diabetes. Eventually, she died diagnosed of HVC. Is there any correlation with this illness, please? And she died of HVC. HVC, yes. I don't, know. I don't know what that is. Maybe you should send me a, a message and explain what the, what the HVC, um, HVC is. HVC, I'm not too comfortable with my knowledge about that. Okay. Yes, maybe, I mean, the common complications that usually is either a stroke which is a cva maybe mm -hmm. that's what he's trying okay, to maybe say that's what he was trying to say okay yes yeah. so diabetes and hypertension are they sisters or their cousins they are, they are well no maybe, brothers. maybe brothers <laughs> <laughs> because they are, they are quite troublesome so yeah, we let them have the yeah they, they, they come together so you have the diabetes which causes renal damage that's your kidney damage yeah. and when you have a kidney damage your blood pressure is going to change. Yeah. Well. We'll, we'll, so we'll be talking thing. about um, mm -hmm. hypertension um, next week. Ayog Benjamin from Akebubu. Hello, Wizard TV. Good evening to you and your panelists. Uh, can I get the contact of the doctors? Sure. Uh, my producer will be sending uh, the contacts to you. Dominic Kese, a champion from Ejiso, says, please ask the doctors to educate us on diabetes and eyesight. And eyesight. Yes. All right. So, I mean, uh, one of the major complications of uncontrolled blood sugar um, something we call retinopathy you know uh, retina is in the eye that's what helps us to see mm. and when the sugar is high for a long time it causes it to damage so you might have seen diabetics who at a certain point they lose their sight so that's why you need to get your sugar checked if the sugar is not checked and it goes on for a long time there will be damage to your your eye Obed says, good evening, Stan. Please, I want to know, when someone urinates two to three times in the night, but doesn't urinate a lot during the day, what about that one too? Okay, so um, in the night, I mean, two to three times is okay, it's accepted. Um, but what is the person doing before going to sleep? Mm -hmm. Are you having a tea? Are you drinking lots of water in the night? Some people in the day, they hardly drink. And in our tropical climate, if you are not drinking, you, you won't, because you're already sweating, you're losing, so you're already dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So you might not be uh, use, uh, passing a lot of urine during the day, but in the night, when you get home and then you feel like, oh, now let me drink water, yes, then maybe when you go to bed, you'll be urinating frequently. However, um, if that is not your normal, okay, so maybe you wake up maybe once, sometimes not, not at all. Then now you, you notice that you are using the washroom frequently at night. Then you should have your blood sugar checked check. because uh, that is a, also a symptom of diabetes. A believer from that, okay, yeah, yeah, doctor, yeah, what doctor said. Also, you see, we are not just talking about the frequency. Also look at the volume, okay? okay. Now, diabetes, um, those of you who have done a bit of science, you know osmosis, okay? So when there's a sugar, the sugar content is high, it draws in more water. You know, with those water, uh, move, all, move to a region of low yeah. concentration of water. So if there's a lot of sugar in it, it will pull it more, and that will create more urine coming out. So if the frequency is there, together with high volumes of the urine, then that should be a concern that it could be diabetes. By respect, whatever it is, you need to get checked, and then we rule out all the other possible causes as well. Ebenezer from Takradi, Doctor, please, is hepatitis related to pre-diabetes? My sugar level is 6.4, and the last time when I checked, 
and I am a hepatitis B patient. <laughs> I mean, hepatitis B is, uh, is different from um, um, diabetes. Mm. However, when we say hepatitis, okay, that is not the viral. It is inflammation of the liver. liver. Okay. And diabetes uncontrolled can lead to that. Okay, so let's get that. Um, Isaac Ankor from Bremen Kutna say in the central region. Please find out from the doctors for me, can the prolonged intake of blood tonics lead to diabetes? Well, um, if you are taking an excessive blood tonic, especially you see for our women, most of the Ghanaian women are already anemic because every man they are losing blood. But for men, we don't lose blood, so why are you taking the blood tonic? Some people say they take it for appetite and all that. But there's a condition called uh, hemochromatosis. I know it's a big term, but this is when uh, there's excessive deposition of iron in the body tissues. Okay. The blood cells, when they break down, the iron is not thrown away. They reuse it. So if you are giving too much iron, then and you are predisposed to having this chemochromatosis. Once it deposits in the pancreas and destroys the pancreas, which is the factory for the insulin, you can develop diabetes. Uh, so if there is no indication for you taking the uh, blood tonics, I, I think there, you should. There, there's, 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 no, there's no need. L Lydia from Sunyani says, I am a baker and, I, uh, and a stay-at-home mom. Of late, I experienced burning and tingling sensations in my left foot and some pains in my leg. Can this uh, signs be attributed to? Yeah. I think she needs to visit the hospital and then get checked. I don't know her weight, I don't know her history, but it's a sign that you could have more of like peripheral neuropathy. Mm. It could also be your, 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 your cholesterol may be high mm. and the sugar could be high. So she needs to get checked. So Della from Kumasi. Good evening, Stan. Another good service to us, your viewers. Thank you, Della. Uh, I eat banku, a wok plant, rice, uh, plantain, or beans for my breakfast before I go to the office. But I walk 20 minutes to work and 20 minutes back each day and walk one hour every Saturday and Sunday. He wants to know if that's okay. <laughs> I'd like to know her weight. <laughs> The last, so, I mean, your doctor <laughs> says that you also need to know yeah. your weight. So, so, I mean, some balancing can be, can be done there. Um, please, I take in downward tablets and this, this, this coating tablet in order to gain weight. Should I please stop taking it because it helps me eat well and gain weight as well? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> uh, weight is not a good thing. I, I just want to be as strict as possible. Yeah. Right. I mean, why why would you want... with the world. Good, yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. good life. Yeah. Some of us so. are try, trying very hard to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> and you are, so, I mean, on the most serious note, I mean, um, weight gain is not good. Mm -hmm. You need to, you, need, you look at your BMI, your body mass index. Mm -hmm. That is what we use actually to determine whether yeah. If your body mass index is high, please, that is bad. You need to be in the, I mean, well controlled weight i mean group 25 and below once you're above going to the 30s you're obese and upper weight please don't don't listen to what your grandmother will say you know sometimes our grandparents yes, say, oh, are, are too, are too uh, slim you yeah, need, need to put on a yeah, little because weight weight is not a good thing <laughs> kojo from who uh, says good evening i want to know if taking in lots of fruits after meals or randomly help to have an impact on diabetes in a positive way okay so Intake of fruits, uh, it's, it's good, especially when it comes to diabetes. But they say too much of everything is bad. The fruits that we take also contain carbohydrates, contain sugars. So um, there, is a, there are portions to it. And even the timing of the eating of the fruits is also important. Uh -huh. There is not a one-size-fits-all. It's individualized. So um, for him, like Doc has been saying, what is your weight? What are you eating before the fruits? Before the uh -huh. fruits. You can eat the best fruits in the world, but if the other factors are still so there, the, 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 it's it a problem. It's um, thank you, Wizard TV. I'm really enjoying your discussion. Please help me wish uh, 
Apostle John K.K. Siao. Uh, happy birthday. So, Apostle John K.K. Siao, happy birthday to you. Um, Owens from uh, Nigeria says, because of the prevalence of diabetes, some people avoid sweet things altogether. Do we really need the intake of sweets and the failure to take sweets and liquor? How bad can it be for the body? Okay, so um, you don't necessarily need the sweets, to be honest with you. I think sweets are for kids, if you ask me, because the kids, kids are active. They are jumping here and then. So for them, these things, I mean, they, they, they need the energy. But as an adult, you don't really need to be taking too much of these sweets. Occasionally, fine. I mean, we, are, we can understand it, but it shouldn't be like a routine thing. Most especially if you are an inactive person, then that is trouble. If you just joined us, this is Wazor TV Insights. My name is Stan Dobe. And uh, tonight, I'm with Dr. Oponi J and Dr. Ofosu uh, Newton. And we are answering your questions and giving you information about diabetes, the causes, the prevention, and how to manage it. Next week, we'll continue the conversation and we'll be tackling uh, hypertension. Uh, your questions are welcome 055 269 7939 or email wizardtv at wizardgroup.com. I have two very interesting questions here. And I mean, these are some of the myths that come with these things. And um, Emmanuel from Oboase says, please, is it true that taking Precursor tea? reduces blood sugar level it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, another trick question okay so um i mean from experience we've had um some clients who will tell you that i mean they take these things and it helps them and i always believe in um you have to be scientific okay so i try to monitor these things but the key is that you don't go off the orthodox medicine okay when you put your medication and you want to supplement it with these refined, non-toxic, mm. herbal stuff, that is fine. The danger is when you decide to let go of the orthodox medicine and just and stick to this on one on without on any monitoring. Okay. That is where the problem is. And most people who fall victim to the stroke and all that is because of that. Of that. Yeah. So. Yao, Mark Nelson is from Kumasi and he says, Stan, great show. Please ask your daughters whether your doctors whether or not Kelly causes diabetes. I find myself eating that mostly in the evenings. <laughs> oh God! Uh, ripe plantain. I, th I thought you asked about jaundice. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly causing jaundice. Of course, um, we, when we talked about the causes of diabetes, we said yes, diet is one of them. Now these oils that are used to fry the Kelly most of them are trans uh, saturated fats, which are not good for, um, for the body. And um, of course, the cocoa or the rye plantain is also starchy. Uh, but the question is, what portion of it are you eating? And you are eating such a fatty meal mm. in the night when you are going to sleep. sleep. So you are not doing yourself any good. So, Even if uh, you are not buying diabetes, you are buying other, other, you are, you are other, yes. other, other things. And, and it goes with um, high cholesterol, and these and complications are worse in those instances. Nane Kia from Sunyani, please thank so much for this educative information. I do urinate more than four times in the night, but I don't have the other signs you spoke about. About three weeks ago, my FBS was nine, but I had eaten late at, the, at, at night. Please, do I have to worry about this? Um, UTI was ruled out. She needs to get checked. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, she needs to go to the once the FBS was nine, and she's having the symptoms. She needs to get checked. They should probably will have to do the HbA1c with a glycated hemoglobin that mm -hmm. doctor spoke about. That would tell us about the long term control. That is more definitive in terms of diagnosis. So she needs to get checked. Nakai says, good evening, Stan. I'm really enjoying the show. My mother was diagnosed with diabetes sometime in 2020. She has been on medication since. Her sugar level is now around 5.8. Can she stop with her medications now? Okay, so um, like I said, that sugar level is a spot test. Okay, we need to know how well controlled it has been over the period. So we use the glycated hemoglobin to measure. 
However, if your blood sugar is now normal, it doesn't mean that the diabetes is cured. Diabetes is a disease, especially with the well, in, in current uh, medical knowledge, it's not curable, it's controlled. It's not like malaria, you take a tablet and then it goes. It's a control. So you'll be on treatment for a period. There are some people whose blood sugars have been controlled by just diet and the lifestyle changes. So if you are taking, say, insulin and now your sugars are within that range, you have to talk to your doctor. And then if uh, the dose has to be titrated so that you don't end up going into low blood sugars, which, which is deadly. Okay, the, ba the high sugar is bad, but the low, low ones are quite deadly. So um, not to stop the medication, see your doctor, let them um, look at your medications and ensure that you are taking the right medicine and not going over. That is very important. Lastly, I will just add what the doctor said. The sugar is well controlled now because of the medication. Medication. Okay. So that, that is what people forget. The sugar, you should know that now the sugar is well controlled because of the medication. Once you stop the medication, it will go up again. Lina from Nigeria. Can long-term loss of blood lead to diabetes? And if you take, uh, if you take in lots of iron, can that also cause diabetes? What can be used for a patient with iron deficiency? I mean, I think there's no relation with the blood sugar and the or, blood. Or, or yeah, anything so, for that matter. Yeah. Nana Jan, uh, a dense van from Wasaman. So uh, thanks very much for the wonderful program. Keep on educating uh, us. Uh, Prosper from Aflau. Can diabetes drugs be dangerous to your body or your organs? Yeah. The drug is helping you to control your diabetes or manage it. You know, so I mean, drugs. Some drugs have side effects, but. You are taking it for a certain purpose. Yeah. I mean, and as I said earlier on, that is why we don't just put you on a medication and we say bye bye. That is why we do the review. And the reviews are very important. When you come, we have a discussion. We ask about how you are doing, how you are taking your medications, are there any problems you are facing with your medication? There are several types of medications that we give. So if this is not, if you are reacting to this badly, we may change it for you. So, I mean, the, the reviews are important. Discuss with your doctors. And, I mean, <laughs> I'm laughing because there's a question here that I think the person himself has a, has a response already. But he still was. He says, uh, uh, Doc, please, I take in herbal medicine, but I mix it with Akpeteshi uh, before taking it. Please, should I put a stop to it or I should continue because my sugar level keeps rising ah. up to 10.5. So, you, 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 you know what you have to do already. Yeah. Nobody, nobody has to tell you. So, please, I mean, it's dangerous. so just stop it. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as, as Dr. Jay said, he says the alcohol is even not good. So, yeah. just, just stop it. Um, Frederick from Brekum says, good job done, doctors. Please, I want to ask if diabetes drugs can lead to the destruction of one's kidneys. You know, people are told all kinds of things yes. to, to avoid getting onto the diabetic you know, uh, prevention medi management medicines. Um, if there is one thing that um, a person should note is that diabetes, if not controlled, can affect the kidney very badly and it's expensive. Yes, it's very expensive. If you end up having to be on kidney replacement, which is dialysis, it's expensive. So yes, there are some medications you won't give with somebody who has a kidney disease. And that is why you have to make sure you discuss with your doctor. Yes, and then there are those medications which actually help improve the kidney function. Uh -huh. So uh, reviews are very important. Very, very, very Most important. Most of the time, uh, the diabetic treatment mm. will not destroy it's your good. kidneys. It's rather the uncontrolled blood sugar. When it goes on for a long time, it was going to cause kidney damage. So they need to, uh, you know, from experience, you realize that some clients, they, they will default treatment. Mm. They will not be compliant. And then things go bad, and now they blame it on the medication. I, I, I have too many questions uh, coming through. It's 9.23. I have seven more minutes to, to go. I, I want to take three questions. And then we'll push the rest of the questions to next week. We'll take these questions before we deal with the, with the topic of hypertension next week. That, that I promise you. Good evening, Stan. My name is Miriam from Takradi. I've had an encounter with Dr. Newton. And he's very experienced and knowledgeable. Thank you for bringing him on your show today. Um, Jude from Kumase says, I am diabetic. 
I keep growing lean and can't walk barefooted because I feel pains in my feet. And um, I think it's one of the things that yeah. Doc spoke yeah. about earlier on. Rufa, Rafu from Ofa in Nigeria says, is weekend exercise alone enough to prevent diabetes? No, I would say no. You know, um, exercise is, should be part of you. You don't wait till the weekend and just go and do a 30 minutes and you are done. <laughs> and, and, and there's when, some, when you finish, you go and drink beer. Uh -huh. there's, a, there's a funny thing that goes on. They'll wait and they'll go and do keep fit on Saturday or yeah. Sunday. After that, they go into Mutu and drink. Drink a lot of alcohol. And that is it for the week. No. It should be an everyday. Ideally, every day you should have some exercise. Because I always tell people, are you not eating every day? <laughs> so the exercise should be part of you. And as I'm saying, I'm talking to the young ones. Let this be part of you as you are growing up. Don't wait to get diagnosed before you hit the road. It might be too late to help you. So let, it has to be part of us. Um, I wanted to take one more question before. Uh, please, I'm currently pregnant. And my rip ribs this afternoon was 5.9 rbs okay this afternoon was 5.9 now what do you advise i do that's a random it's, it's, it's normal right but, um, with pregnancy at mm. um once you are going for antenatal uh, visits at a certain gestation age they have to check with the oral glucose tolerance test too find out if you have diabetes so um yes the rbs is within the normal range however um you still have to go for your routine antenatal care to receive so this is Wizard TV Insights, a conversation with Stan Dobe. Tonight we've been bringing you information about diabetes, uh, the causes, the ways to prevent and also manage it. And uh, your questions have been a lot. And uh, I love the questions because as I always say, it allows us to practically provide you with uh, responses that helps to guide the things that uh, we'll do. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be giving you my uh, outro shortly, but Doc, I, I didn't want to miss this, you know, as I said earlier, Total House is my, is my uh, uh, what do you call it, my, my medical facility where, where, where I go to. And um, one of the beautiful things I love about Total Clinic is the, you know, regular messages that we receive to you know, remind us to go in to check, you know, check for diabetes. Hey, have you done your prostate uh, cancer checks, and uh, etc. And you also have these mobile clinics that you send out. How, I mean, how can uh, organizations or companies, you know, make contact, make use of that facility? All right. So, yes. So, I mean, at Total House Clinic, I mean, as I always say, our goal is prevention and to preach the word, give people the education so that you don't even get sick. Now, uh, on certain occasions, certain days of the year, the World Health Days, we normally send out educative information to our clients and anybody who has ever come to our clinic. And our mobile clinic, we have two mobile vans. One is a gynae and one is purely um, occupational health. So we normally go do outreach. We do medicals for remote areas. And it's also open for people who, want to, who are maybe far away from the city and have a group and needs to have their I mean, do their medicals. Anytime you can just um, book it and we, we, we have the personnel to go with you and we are always available. We have two trucks always ready to move. So um, I think you, you, my number will be given out. Yes, I so mean, we'll, we'll, we'll provide the numbers and uh, anytime and, you want. Of yeah. course, if you call us, we'll be able to link <laughs> you up with Total House yeah. Clinic. And um, on your behalf, I want to thank Dr. Abraham Opon AJ. Uh, from the Total House Clinic. He is the manager responsible for occupational health and employee wellness. And Dr. Emmanuel Fusu Newton. And uh, Miriam has given the testimony about him in already this evening on the show. Uh, he's with the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. And the two gentlemen will be joining us next week, Monday, for us to continue the, the conversation. We would answer um, the questions that you, you sent in about diabetes before we zone in into um, hypertension and uh, take your questions and also either provide you with some education on, on that. Now, being diabetic or hypertensive can take a toll on your energy level, mood, and ability to function properly. Mentally, you may lose concentration and feel anxious or depressed most of the time. The good news, however, 
is that a healthy lifestyle can help you feel better. You don't have to change your entire life overnight. It is much easier to make a couple of small changes that lead you in the direction of an improved well-being. Making changes to improve your health can lead to benefits for your body, your mind, your health, and even your wallet. There are several things you can do to manage your blood sugar and blood pressure, including eating regularly throughout the day, staying hydrated, reducing stress, taking medications as recommended, and exercising. If you feel as though you can control a habit, you may want to talk to your doctor about it. If they can't directly help you, they will recommend other professionals like registered dietitians or therapists. Remember, blood pressure and blood sugar medications do not cure hypertension and diabetes, but manage them. They usually need to be taken for a very long time. Your journey towards a healthier lifestyle starts now. Make that conscious effort to start with small changes that you feel confident you can achieve. This is how we wrap up on tonight's edition of Wazor TV Insights. My name is Stan Dogbe, and thank you very much, Dr. J, Dr. Newton, and, um, and then also thank you very much to uh, the production team for uh, tonight's production, and as many more people are uh, um, enjoying the show and sending the messages. And as I promised, uh, we're going to you know, show you some five minutes of football. And um, Wizard TV is a proud partner of Yingo FC. Yingo FC is a Dabala-based uh, football club. They've played seven matches so far in the Division Three. They are their first outing you know, in, in, in Division Three. Uh, they lost one, they drew one, and they won five. Accumulated 16 points, scored 13 goals, and conceded six goals. And uh, they lead the zone two table now, and they've qualified, even though they have one match more to go for the Division Three Middle League. And um, sometime in July, we'll be playing the Middle League. So, Yungo, onwards, forward. And uh, we are happy to be partners with Yungo TV. So, as we wrap up, enjoy this. Uh, uh, what, how do I term it? A presentation of Yingo's game so far, the goals. And um, my favorite player uh, in Yingo, Dixon, scored two brilliant goals yesterday. Congratulations. <laughs>